Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming up this week, changes at the Main Street Cinema have fans upset. Permits are shedding some light on what we can expect at the marvel theme land at California Adventure. And we're going to finish our discussion on Star Wars Galaxy's Edge with more info about food and merchandise. All that coming up next. From the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, and points around Southern California, this is the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged. This is the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged, episode 772 for the week of June 19th, 2019. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com and by disboards.com. Join the more than 1 million fans who plan their Disney vacations on disboards.com. You'll find information and strategies on every aspect of your Disney vacation. Head over to disboards.com and join in the conversation. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the show coming to you from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friends, Corey Fiascanaro. Welcome home. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, really. That wasn't creepy. Uh, Rhino Clavin. Hello. Back on the switch, our producer, Mr. Craig Williams. Hello. <clears throat> and joining us out in California from the lovely town of Fresno, Mr. Tom Bell. Hey, everyone. And making up for Tom, we had the lovely Morgan Hi. Lamone. <laughs> Hi. So, welcome to the show, everybody. Hope uh, your week is off to a good start. Couple of things in housekeeping. First, got to give a plug to our friends out at Magic Candle Company. We are burning very Vero uh, in the studio this week. It's one of my new favorites. I'm burning this a yeah. lot. Very beachy. Really, just great, great candles. Although they did come out with a new one called Splash. Mm -hmm. Not a fan. I, so I got, I ordered Splash too. I haven't burnt it yet though, so the I was is still out. I, I, I just, it was too weak. It was yeah. too weak, and I just, I don't know that the smell of the water at Pirates of the Caribbean is just not my first. Is not my go-to for a candle. You know? See, I have a feeling I'm going to like it a lot uh, just because I really like their original version of Pirate Water. And that's kind of what it reminds me of. But it smells a little bit more woody than, no. than that did. So. I don't know. I'm still very of your own contemporary. But anyway, magiccandlecompany.com. Code Disney Info saves you 15% on your order. On any on as many orders as you want to make. There's not a one-time deal with that. So head over to magiccandlecompany.com. And of course, they are... A, a sponsor of the Diz. Um, and the only other thing I want to mention is that this will be my final week hosting this show. Um, when we rebooted it uh, last June, I had said that I do this for about a year, kind of get it going, and then turn it over to these guys to run with it. I'll still be on from time to time, but there are some other projects I'm going to be working on. So, um, Starting next week, Mr. Craig Williams will be sitting center center table. And, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm, I'm glad, because even if you weren't, you're doing it. <laughs> um, so, and actually, th uh, I think this is going to be the first time, Craig, you're hosting a, di like, not standing in, but actually hosting a Disney show. Yes. It's always been universal. Yep, no, but I've never been a an only Disney show host. I filled in for you on the on the Walt Disney World edition and that's about it. So, he's getting by coastal. Well, we always knew. <laughs> <laughs> we always knew. Um so yeah, so um it has been wonderful. I've really enjoyed it um and this does not mean that I don't love Disneyland and I'm not going to I'm be out in Disneyland in a few weeks. Um, and that I won't be on the show from time to time. Just uh, time for time for me to do a few other things right now. So, all right. With that, does anybody else have anything? 
Uh, I just want to uh, mention if you are one of our Patreon supporters out there, um, Patreon being our crowdfunding um, site, uh, just check it out. We've been doing, um, we've been going through and posting, uh, basically there's been a post every day this month, and there's scheduled to be posts every day this month, but just a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that went into um, Galaxy's Edge and what we did out there is is up. I just did a video yesterday that's about 20 minutes long of um, <clears throat> like walkthroughs and various like just while we were doing other stuff kind of like a little window behind the curtain that was the worst metaphor yeah. ever the window, <laughs> window behind, behind the, the curtain. curtain who built that theater <laughs> <laughs> anyway the window behind the curtain yeah that's, a, the curtain that's gonna be the name of my the autobiography the window yeah. behind the curtain i guess <laughs> it depends on what side of the window you're on yeah you're on the a- outside then it's it's technically the windows in you're front of the You're inside of the curtain. house and you're staring at the kids on your front lawn. That's a you're the window behind the curtain. That sounds like a, like a very interesting spooky movie that me <laughs> and Haley would find on Netflix and be like, oh, let's check this out. Yeah. <laughs> Only it's me running into gates at Galaxy's Edge because I ran into a gate when I was walking in the Millennium Falcon. Oh, I thought you said running into gays. No, uh, well, that too. That too. <laughs> happens to me quite a bit. <laughs> so. As one does. All right. Anything else? Anything else for housekeeping? All right, let's talk about this uh, first story, and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, throw this over to you, Morgan. Um, apparently, they have changed the Main Street Cinema and turned it into a store, and the uh, the villagers are storming the castle, so to speak. Yeah, people are extremely upset. So, for those of you who don't know, the Main Street Cinema has four or six screens playing classic Mickey cartoons and it's a good place to like escape and decompress especially if you have like a child that's like overstimulated it's like a really really good place to like take a breather and just nice quiet anywho uh, people are not happy they turned it into a gift shop and they didn't even put a lot of merch inside of it so it's like what's the point and they added cash registers they took away the little um turnstile thing so it's it's not it's like there's already so many stores on Main Street. You could have put it in any other store. Well, ours out here turned into basically an art store. It was kind of like the Art of Disney store, basically. <laughs> um, so what do they have out there? What kind of merch do they put in? Um, it's just kind of like um, American, like Fourth of July themed kind of stuff. So nothing super unique or exclusive. It's probably in some of the other stores on Main Street. They're just like, let's put it in more. Why do you think they did this? It's pretty clear. Yeah. What's, what's that, Craig? Uh, it's pretty clear. They're just, it's all about infusing, making as much money as possible. And if there's a, a they're saying, I believe Disney came out and said to someone, maybe like uh, the local newspaper out there, that they were doing it to try to get more people to come into the, the theater. But that's, I only half believe that it's it's really looking at saying well if we put merchandise in here full time are we going to actually get people to buy stuff in here are they going to walk in and make purchases and i think that's solely what it's about and soon it will be a thing of the past where maybe they'll still have cartoons running in there but there will not be any viewing areas for the cartoons they might still be running in the background most likely it'll just become blank screens in the the back where they can hang stuff up over it but i think it's you know i could be completely off on it Maybe this is a, a moment where Disneyland locals and, and purists will actually stand up against the company and, well, and make and them change it back, but I, I don't I was, think so. I was just going to say they are the only group that is actually have, has a history of, uh, of, of being successful doing that because, you know, we've talked about it many times, um, you know, Roughly, I, I don't know what the exact number is, but you know, it's always been bantered around that about eighty percent of their audience out there are locals, um, and it's just the opposite out here. Eighty percent of our audience out here, I think it's even more than that, are tourists. Um, so the locals, the annual pass holders, we don't have that kind of community around Disney here that Southern California has around Disneyland. So they really don't care what we think. Um, Unless we're doing reviews of the Grand Floridian. Hmm. But it's a shame that's what it takes. Anyway, um, but out there, they, there is a history of them. Yeah. You know, because that's, that's the bread and butter audience, right? That's the bread and butter audience. So 
if they do, I think Morgan should lead the charge down Main Street. <laughs> if if they do, um, then they might. They might. Uh, they need to. I am <laughs> like I'm in on this. I am devastated about this. Like we we recently launched a little while ago and just had a video go out this week for it for our Disneyland Essentials uh, series. And um, you know, Rhino's focusing specifically on food. Because he's just a little Not piggy. Always, well, I have some. No, he's, right. he's just a little piggy. He loves he's food. He's losing some weight. <laughs> uh, well, it's, there's there's other issues to talk about with that, but uh, but one of my what <laughs> is there something I need to know? We're not going to get into that. Yeah. or an illness no. of some sort. <laughs> no. Like, no, we're not going down that road. Uh, but one of the, one of the first things that I I jumped out when I thought about a Disneyland essential for me, it was it was the Main Street Cinema. And mostly because we don't have ours anymore. It's it's missing. It's missing from our parks, and it is. It's one of those great little tucked away places. It's on. It's literally on Main Street, the busiest part of Disneyland, arguably because you have to walk up and down it unless you ride in on the monorail. But it's just this quiet area that very few people will go into and stay there for a while. So you can go in, enjoy the air conditioning, watch these classic cartoons, and just have a, a little bit of an escape for a while. And like, it, it's a place that I go into every time. It is one of my favorite things about Disneyland. And so, for them to just throw in merchandise is so insulting. And I just want to point out, this is Craig's devastated face, not to be confused with Craig's ecstatic face, <laughs> which is basically the same thing. And it's it's little things like that that like the Main Street Theater that add uh, aspects of discovery to the park, which I think is awesome. Like you could go to Disney Disneyland multiple times. I know I did before you ever even walk into the Main Street Theater because it is kind of tucked away. It's easy to miss. Uh, but then when you finally do, it's like oh, I just discovered this this new thing, and it's 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 really nice. It's really cute. And uh, I think about aspects here in worlds of some some of those things are actually my favorite things. Uh, about about Disney here, um, so it's a shame that they put a gift shop there that doesn't even have any. It, it would be maybe a little bit less of a, a like a bummer if it was a unique store, but it, like Morgan's saying, right. it's not really a unique store. It's like things that you'd probably find in the Emporium or at another location. So that's well, I, something I read that um, they were they had merchandise coming into the Disney <laughs> Showcase shop, and so they needed overflow space, and so they bumped. Merchandise from Disney Showcase into the into the cinema. Well, what do you think, Tom? You think they're gonna uh, that they'll be the out the outcry or the uh, I, uh, will be enough to? I don't know that. I, I yeah. I mean, on social media, people are upset, but I don't know that that many of the annual pass holders will stand up for it. I yeah I. I don't know that that there will be that big of an outcry other than what's happening on social media. Yeah. Okay. For me, it's like the only spot that there isn't merchandise being sold or something being sold on Main Street. So it just seemed like an inevitable thing. Yeah. Like I, I, I think it was cool, but it's one of those where I'm I'm actually really surprised this didn't happen sooner. It'd be great if they somehow had the merchandise themed to the location or something, or could be more respectful in that aspect to it, but. It's just the way, the way of the corporation, you know. All I all I can say is make sure you visit Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln over and over and over again, so we don't lose that next. God, uh, now I think I see now there. I think there would be. Yeah, I, I think, think would they would have major upgrade. problems. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. there's a reason you still have Mr. Toad and we don't. Yeah, honestly, mm -hmm. I really think that. I think they know there's there are lines they can't cross. Although you know, let's be honest. Remember the outcry when they started adding characters into Small World? When they started adding Disney characters into Small World, and people lost their minds out there, mm -hmm. and didn't change, didn't change the direction of it, did it? I mean, those characters are still there, and nobody complains about it so much anymore either. So, who knows? Who knows? All right. Uh, the other story I want to talk about, Rhino, tell me. Uh, the uh, LA Times, I guess, was taking a look at some permits. Yeah, they so they were saying that um, Disney has Disneyland has filed uh, permits um, in regards to their Marvel Land expansion, which is supposed to start opening in phases beginning in 2020. Um, 
Well, I just lost the. Uh, the city of Anaheim has a pro- uh, has approved a handful of building permits for projects such as a bathroom overhaul, a retail outlet, a microbrewery, and a character meet and greet area, plus improvements to uh, the behind the scenes buildings. And um, they're saying that the construction permits uh, assess the value of work so far at more than fourteen million dollars. And Oof. then um, one of the permits approved um, this last Wednesday allowed for a two thousand seventy one square foot merchandise outlet with three attached canopies so um and this this paper says for comparison the average home in the western u.s is 1800 square feet according to uh, census data so a little bit bigger than a house um but <laughs> I, I think it's cool i mean if you do look at the original concept art the brewery i guess isn't a surprise because you can kind of see a can in the left corner and it, it's it's uh the idea i guess is that it's going to be an ant-man themed uh, brewery, microbrewery, which sounds cool to me. I, I look forward to that. That seems very you're California the, to me, I guess. Well, yeah, you're you know that too. I, it's something about stepping in California, just bring, bring on the booze. I don't know. Um, and then, and yeah, and then um, he'll spend three hours talking about how beautiful the pavement <laughs> is. It's um, not a Disneyland trip if you aren't admiring the pavement at some point. In your he literally, the first time he was out there, he had he had a couple too many yeah. sure. cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> And the next thing I know, I'm listening to this two-hour soliloquy <laughs> on how amazing the pavement at Disney. I do feel is. vindicated oh. on that because after that trip, we got back, and a friend of mine was like, "Well, just so you know, they had just redone the pavement <laughs> over in that area where you were talking about." And I'm like, "Well, look at me, the connoisseur of Disneyland pavement." Uh. Like, <laughs> so, our, um, but anyway, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for Marvel Land. I'm really excited. I kind of hope that brewery opens with the 2020 phase of things. But they're saying that, obviously, there are going to be a lot more announcements in regards to it for the D23 convention in the end of August. So Yeah, well, I'm very interested to see what, what comes out of yeah. D23. We're hearing, yeah. we're hearing things, but I don't know. Um, they, they usually save some of their biggest announcements of the year uh, for that. So... Really? Yeah, it's uh, they. Yeah, I mean, they if, if, if this is a year out, there's, there should be we should know more than we do now. Yeah, and I, I don't know how. Like, obviously, the last expo, it was a lot of groundbreaking news. Uh, that it was just an onslaught of news over I'll and over and over that again. In, uh, it, w- it was an awful day uh, trying to get all that information out there that quickly. Uh, this year, though, the it, unless I completely already forgot, Tom can correct me. I'm sure, but the parks panel isn't until Sunday. <laughs> And it's like Sunday afternoon. Yes. Usually that's like, that's kind of a dead time. They're burying it. Yeah. yeah. So it makes me think that while there will be, the fact that they're dedicating a, a, an entire panel to parks means they're going and they're going to announce something. I just don't know if it's going to be on the same level as it was in 2017. So what what takes the what 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 take what, what takes the Saturday slot then? Oh, it's o- on Saturday. They only Disney have Plus? the combination of live action and animation. So that's where all the that's where all the announcements are coming from then. Because yeah. Saturday Saturday was the day they made they did the uh, video game panels. Was Saturday was the big one? No. I think right? No, no. Sunday. 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 I'm sorry, Sunday. No, I'm I, I was thinking Sunday. Was, yeah, you're right. Saturday. Saturday. Yes, yeah. that was after yeah. live action on and, Saturday, and that's when. Like, there's, a new, there's a new Disney Plus panel, I think. That, yeah, there yeah. is a Disney Plus panel. I See, I took it as they were trying to spread out where everything was because the Parks um, parks and Resorts panel and the live action animation, live action and animation were on the same day. That's all like, that's a big day. And so, but this event is supposed to be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I always felt like Sunday kind of fell a little short with just the video game panel stuff. But then... Now they don't really do that as much, so I thought they were just kind of like, all right, well, we'll move a big thing over here, so we have a big thing on each day. It's but. like any convention, though. The final day is the throwaway day. Um, it's, you yeah. know, people yep. show up, but it's not, they're doing all their last second purchasing, they're, they're maybe doing one or two things, like, it, maybe they are doing it to try to spread it out, but the fact is, it's Saturday's the day. If you want to make waves, you you do it on Saturday. Well, that's the first day that sells out. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. That's why I think they're trying to make each day more worth it by doing that. Not because it's throw away, but because Saturday sold out, so they can only you can only have a maximum amount of people in there. Why not max out every one of the other days as well? You know, mm-hmm. we'll find out. We'll find out. Okay, um, Morgan, there's a question I wanted to ask you before we move on to our Galaxy's Edge discussion. Um, 
I, I realize Galaxy's Edge is still doing the reservation system until uh, June 23rd, um, but what have the crowds been like in Disneyland Park outside of Galaxy's Edge? It has been absolutely wonderful. I know these guys noticed it when they were here on that first initial week, and I thought like, oh, people are going to catch on, that the crowd levels have been lower. Nope, it's still super nice and super short. Um, obviously, some of the rides that are typically a long wait are still kind of a long wait. Um, I did notice in uh, Disney California Venture that the wait times are a little bit longer or than... Disneyland is because like people I, I feel like are just completely avoiding Disneyland or are blacked out from Disneyland but yeah the crowds level has been super super nice we brought a friend on Sunday we got to hit all the big rides and still go to our Galaxy's Edge reservation that same night so it's been really really nice wow uh, um, uh, because you know we're obviously we're gearing up for it out here and uh, um, well we should also probably mention that um, I think Disneyland fans are now avenged that uh, this morning, <laughs> this morning we got, we got our holy crap Huge increase in, yeah. on annual passes. They're doing the same thing to us that they did to you guys back in 2015, when they just made the price of the annual passes insane because trying to discourage them. So yeah, I think there's a, there's some cheering going on on the West Coast this morning. Um, well, it except kind the, of affects us though too because the premiere went up. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, except for the people like us who have the Coast to Coast yeah. Pass, because we're screwed again, too, because that went up but, another $200. <clears throat> but that always goes up. Yeah. That always goes up, and, I, you know, I don't know. It's still worth it to me. I was joking around and saying that this price hike is all part of the immersive experience that they're trying to give us with Galaxy's Edge, because, you know, the first order just landed in Batu. Kylo Ren's here, of course. You know, he's going to impose taxes on the guests. But I'm, I'm going to tell people, go visit my friend Savi over at Savi's Workshop. For just a low price of $200, you can join the resistance and really get immersed I'm, in this I'm, whole world. I really, thank God, this is my last week hosting the show. <laughs> um, um, I said we should riot and start dumping the blue milk in the ocean like we're the British, like the in uh, Boston like Harbor. <laughs> yeah, like The Boston Tea Party. Yeah, the, the Disneys are coming. The Disneys are dumping, coming. Dumping the blue milk in the river of America. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, let's kind of segue into uh, continuing our discussion that we started a couple weeks ago about Galaxy's Edge. We wanted to talk more about food and merchandise. Um, so I'll let you decide, Rhino, where you want to start. What do you want to talk about first? Um, I think we should, uh, well, we, I, let's just address the merchandise, I guess, because I know I was very big on the uh, the clothing. Like, when they first announced this, they were saying, like, you were going to be able to get all these kind of clothes that are inspired by the locals and all this sort of stuff um, and basically kind of look like you are one of the members of this planet or, you know, of a Star Wars planet in the, in the thing. I don't know that it delivered on that aspect of it. There was a lot of, um, there was clothes and I do respect that there were no clothes items that said Star Wars on it anywhere. There was a t-shirt that said Black Spire Outpost and then in the Star Wars language underneath, you know, it, it had that under there and then a picture of the outpost on it. There was stuff that had like resistance. It had looked like it had been first order like propaganda merchandise that resisted members had gotten into and like written over it and stuff and and then there was a bunch that, of first that's that's kind of the the one that sticks out for me is in on the in the little kiosk by where rise of the resistance is there's actually merchandise that says rise of the resistance it's like the name of the attraction mm. which is what they said they weren't going to do uh, well, I, I didn't. I didn't really. I, what I saw, I wasn't. I didn't know that's where it was. I just saw where it said like resistance and stuff like that on it. But um, it was surprising because I didn't bring a jacket and it was getting cold. And I kept telling Craig, "Well, I, you know what? I'm just gonna I'll buy a jacket while I'm in here." And then there was only there were only two jackets like in the entire land to kind of choose from, you know. And I I didn't necessarily like love either of the two designs, or they didn't they didn't fit me right either. But um, so the clothing thing was a little a little weirder. Also, you're you can't wear the robes, the Jedi robes that you purchased there. You can wear some of the clothes that you purchased there, but not all of the clothes. So I'm sure they'll tell you as you buy them, you know, just to be aware of that. But um, you know, I I I thought actually 
in my opinion, that the merchandise didn't overrun the area. You know, I was worried, you know, you were going to open and everywhere you stepped, you were going to be able to buy merchandise and it would be merchandise and merchandise and merchandise. And there were a bunch of places, but more or less, I felt like it was kind of confined to the to the to the marketplace area then you had dock on ours and then you know there was a resistance air or a first order area but i it wasn't it didn't feel like it was in my face like that i had to purchase anything. so it wasn't overwhelming then yeah i i didn't think so but what know? about what about the pricing on things did you find pricing uh, there was in line with other places around the park or was it more expensive. No, I felt like it was it was pretty reasonable actually because um, I ended up with you know I did do the build a lightsaber and yes that is a lot of money but we we were yeah but that lightsaber you built you built for me yeah I have it right um, it was two hundred dollars two hundred and fifteen after tax two hundred and fifteen yeah. dollars after tax I'm going to tell you that I was stunned at the quality of yeah, that. Yeah. That is absolutely worth every single penny of two hundred and fifteen dollars. Yeah, I've seen more expensive lightsabers. Yep. that yeah. were not nearly as good. I don't know how long those are going to remain at two hundred dollars. Yeah. I think before long you're going to see them at three or three fifty. They're very, they're very hefty. The metal is very thick, and we kind of did out the math on that. Where like if they're selling a regular hint, a hilt for one hundred and ten dollars, and the blade is like fifty dollars. But then you also get the pin, and then you get the case, and I'm like, well, the price adds up. It feels yeah. like it's the same amount if I were spending on a lightsaber anywhere else in the world. Because even if you get the, you know, like the sharper image ones they made were like 125 to 150. So, I and the experience is kind of what you're paying for right. too. Which which the three of us each went back and made our own too, and so we we loved it. I highly recommended it. Um, but that also is hidden, you know, it's, and it's all in this theming. You know, Corey talked about it earlier in the show. It's Savi's workshop, and it's supposed to be a, you know, a metal scrap heat. So it wasn't, that also wasn't in your face. It's kind of just tucked off to the side. It's not like, build a lightsaber here, do this here, you know, and and you can go into some of these places like the Droid Depot, and I felt like it's really cool to just go in and see it, even if you don't want to build a droid, because it's like this factory kind of looking setting. But I didn't, I didn't feel like it was overwhelming, and when it comes to price... You know, lightsaber aside, like I bought one of the uh, the little plush Ewoks, and he was um, eighteen dollars, but I got an annual discount, a pass holder discount on it. And then the same with some of the other stuff. So I'm like, this is how much I'm paying for this in the Emporium. I feel like so I didn't really see the price hike that much. You know, I feel like all Disney merchandise has kind of had a little bit of a hike recently, where like T-shirts. You can you can probably find a T-shirt for twenty five, thirty five, or forty dollars is what you're looking at, and I feel like Star Wars stuff was kind of in the thirty five to forty range. Wow. The only thing, in my opinion, that seemed overpriced was the creatures that you could buy at the mm. creature stall. So the the porgs, the loth cats, um, like the the little salacious crumb that sits up on your shoulder, but realistically they are in line with other prices around disney property but just for me when i was standing there holding them and looking at them i didn't feel like the quality matched up to what they were charging right but that being said uh i believe the loft cats have now been sold out yeah, for sold a out. while and uh the porgs are still wildly popular rhino brought back a porg for a friend i know morgan yeah. just adopted I a have, porg as well i have one right here yeah. <laughs> so but it, but what i love about it is like it it has this handle inside of it and it's got two yeah. hooks so it's one hook controls his wings and one is the mouth and it makes the sound so it makes sound effects and like <laughs> <laughs> and he comes, it's really cute. And they give it to you in a cage, like in a in a yeah. cardboard cage. So I kind of mm -hmm. like that. I love that theming when it came to that. But uh, but it was what was cool too is like in Doc Undars. You know, at first I was like when we were doing the media clips, I was like, oh, there's nothing. Uh, so I said to Craig, oh, so this is like I'm just going to come in here to buy nothing because I don't understand these things. But now we learned. I told you about the inside of your lightsaber. If you build the lightsaber, you get there's a um, uh, kyber crystal inside of it and that doesn't just work with your lightsaber it works with this holocron cube too that you can put it in and there's messages from like force ghosts that teach you how to be a jedi i didn't know this until like we left or but there's a jedi one and a sith one but then there's also in one of the red kyber crystal containers if you're going to buy one of those you could get a rare black one let's let's you know let's be honest um i mean disney's always been good at merchandising from what i'm hearing and watching 
they took it. To, they just took it to a whole nother level here. Well, right. your the droid that you have yeah. um, interacts in the land, but yeah. we never saw it interact because we kind of like had it away really quick. But I, I've been watching videos of people walking around with the droids, and as you go around, you know, if you put it in your backpack, its head starts spinning and making all these crazy noises. I think that's awesome. You know? Yeah, no, it, they really did go all the way with with that. Um, and what, Morgan? Yeah, when we went to the cantina, my friend had the build your own droid, and it, we had it on the table, and it started dancing for like a couple seconds oh. um, in the cantina. It was so cool. That's like wow. it was only for a couple of seconds, so I didn't get it on video, but it was just like she had a BB unit, so it was like wobbling back and forth. It was the coolest thing ever. That's crazy. And I also do want to mention that pins were kind of like for me as a pin collector i feel like when something big like this happens i need to collect like all of the pins corresponding to the event and uh for for me that was a little overwhelming because you would go basically all the gift stores had two pins that had the galaxy's edge opening one was r2d2 one was the millennium falcon but then you went to star traders and they had a whole selection of galaxy's edge pins and different mystery boxes then you went to um launch bay and they had different mystery boxes and another jumbo pin that you can only get there. And then you went into the land, and by Rise of the Resistance, they had an entirely different selection of like 30 different open edition pins. So like by the time I had actually gotten to the land, me and Ryan were just talking about it, I already spent $400 on yeah. just pins. Mm. And if I wanted to keep going and get everything, all the pins that, uh, that Galaxy's Edge had to offer, I'd more than double that. Yeah, and there was fun merchandise. I I actually think from what I saw too, there is a lot they could that I, I feel like they came out with stuff, but there is so much more room to grow. Like for like, I I oh yeah, we're the, we, we haven't seen over. yeah yeah we haven't seen the last of the merchandise for yeah. sure. All right, talk to me about the food items. Um, specifically, what really stands out as must dos. Mm -hmm. And again, about the pricing, how does it? I th well, I think Craig and I felt differently than everybody else, <laughs> uh, maybe on the food thing. But I love particularly the Ronto roasters, the the wrap that it was basically like a hot dog, and it had another. I don't remember what the other meat was in it, but it was all wrapped in this pita, and it sounds or looks kind of simple. I think it looks cool, but I loved it. Where like every time we were in there, I was like, I want to go get another one. I want to go get another one. You know, we were only in there two or three times, but. I was like, I'm going to keep eating these. Every yeah. time I'm here, I'm going to get one of these, you know. And I thought it was decently priced, too. But Do they serve mint juleps? <laughs> they don't. If, but, they, if only they did. But the bar, I feel like I will find my Galaxy's Edge version of mint julep inside of the cantina. Because there was plenty to choose from that was non-alcoholic and alcoholic. So I, I need to explore that more. Yeah, the Ronto wrap was definitely my, like, must-have item in there. It was, I believe, like $12.49. And, then and what you, exactly is it now? It is, like Rhino said, it's a pita. And then inside it's filled with like basically like a Portuguese sausage. And then I believe sliced pork. Yes. And then a little bit of like a little like an aioli on it and a slaw. And so it had that nice balance of like soft and warm mixed with crunchy. Yeah. And it's it just texture. very savory. Like overall, it was an extremely pleasing dish. Um, and right. it's nice that you can just grab it, walk around with it, and you don't have to actually sit down and, and devote time. It's it's that on-the-go item that you can grab and, and run around with. And with mobile order being at the restaurants there, it makes it even easier to get it. You don't have to wait in line. Not that there was a big line, but once it's open to the general public, yeah, that we'll could change. Yeah, see what it looks like then, yeah. yeah. And we were, and I'll just mention it and then we'll get to everyone else here we did go in to docking bay seven uh, when we were out there uh, unfortunately we didn't get the breakfast items in the land because we didn't have any morning reservations the the breakfast switched over at 10 a.m so we didn't get to try any of that but we did get every lunch and dinner item available at docking bay seven in the time while we were there and uh i if, if i'm gonna put up between ronto roasters getting the ronto wrap or anything at docking bay seven I have to give it to the Ronto wrap, but I think we did find some some gems yeah. in Docking Bay Seven. There uh, were two things that I would definitely go back and get again. Like there was, a, and I had the uh, the um, I don't I believe it was completely vegan. It might have been not, but there was a Pollution Garden spread that's only served during lunch. Pollution, Pollution, Pollution. Oh, I thought it said pollution. E pollution. It's all smog. Um, but it's um, there was that, and then um, the uh, the uh, the. Uh, 
the yip nip tip, salad. Tip yip salad, yeah. And um, I thought that was, I thought both of those were really really good. And I was like, oh okay, these are these are be great. And the roaster is a must. Well, for me too, and the salad yeah. is a it's a chicken salad essentially. Yeah. They also have another tip yip uh, fried tip yip and and Dorian, I believe, is what they call it. Yeah. And it is basically a piece of fried chicken, boneless fried chicken, Square. served on top of mashed potatoes and kind of with gravy and some vegetables. And it's uh, it, that was I got that one of the times we went in and it, it was it was solid. It was a, it was a nice, tasty dish. So and not overly priced, I think, right around 15 bucks. So decent. I got I got the uh, the tip yip salad both days that we were in. That was by far my favorite item. That's the chicken salad we were talking about with like a like a like a greenish ranch dressing on it. Had a little bit of a kick to it. That was my favorite item. Um, and then the Ronto wrap was a close second, and it was something that I wouldn't necessarily have been interested in trying because I'm not a huge fan of hot dogs. But we tried it for the video, and I was like, man, this is really good. And I actually went back a couple times after we did that video and got it. And yeah, the Ronto wrap very close second, but. Uh, but I, doc, for me, Docking Bay 7 was my favorite. And I do think the prices are pretty on par with, like, quick service that you're going to find in the park anyway. Like, the the, um, the roasted Andorian tippy up salad is $13.99. Um, that, the, the vegetarian uh, pollution garden spread I talked about was $12.99. I still think they yeah. should call it pollution garden. <laughs> Did that's they give what I thought you said? Yeah, pollution. The pollution garden they, spread. They did discounts in there too. So the only areas you couldn't get discounts in the land really was the lightsaber and the droid. Mm-hmm. And the rest, I was surprised that they were like, "Oh yeah," they'd they'd ask us any intergalactic discounts. What about Tom with food? We've been asking that uh, question for years. <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, in the video we talked about the 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 uh, Ronto roasters, and we went back the second day and had another one. And the the first time we had it, we delayed eating it, and it sat, and we were taking pictures, and so it wasn't like fresh from the from the from the location. The second time I had it, it was fresh. It's still not my favorite, but was way more enjoyable. The thing that I'm disappointed in Rancho Roasters is that's the only thing they serve. Yeah, minus the jerky. Yeah, <laughs> which was well, yeah, minus hated. well, yeah, jerky. Um, but when we went back later, we also tried dinner at Docking Bay Seven, and I think that was one of my favorite things was the braised shock roast, which is the pot roast. Yeah, that was really good. That yeah. was yeah, that was delectable. It's also eighteen ninety nine, but. I like that they switch over, that they had some different offerings for dinner, mm-hmm. some for, for day, and that there is breakfast items as well, because sometimes yeah. I feel like I can't always find breakfast items at Disneyland, you know? Yeah. And I'm going to say it right now, I do not care for blue milk or green milk. No, I don't either. And I do not recommend it. Even it even dogs. to try it once, I think I'm already Describe it to point. me. What was blue milk? Well, it wasn't milk, <laughs> first off, and that's where I that's where I take a hard turn on it. It's basically a slushy like substance that's a mixture of rice and rice milk, um, yeah. rice milk and what's coconut milk. coconut milk. Um but it's because it's in a slushy form, it doesn't have that milky consistency to it. It's Have you ever left the milk in the back of the refrigerator and you go to pour it some days and you're like, why is there ice in this milk right now? Yeah. It was kind of uh, that-ish. Yeah, but so then you have tropical flavors that kind of, that round out each one of them. They're both different. But, I didn't even think it tasted um, like anything. That was a thing. It just, it did have a taste to it. It just wasn't, it wasn't pleasing. Like, I, I mean, maybe I'm in the minority, I didn't need anything special. You could have literally just served me a glass milk. of milk yeah. that was blue. Just give just me make it blue a, raspberry. I, I don't know. I don't even need that. It could be blueberry. It doesn't even yeah. need to be any of that. I just wanted milk that was cold and blue or green. And that's I would have been just fine with that. So for me, it, it tasted kind of like a diet icy that I couldn't really distinguish exactly what flavor like they were going for. Maybe crushed up sweet tarts and yeah. like dropped two of them in this <laughs> gulp size thing and was like, there's the flavor. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it, it wasn't very good. Uh, I was, I feel like they could have done a much better job because like if it was actual milk, like it would spoil. It wouldn't, it wouldn't work out that well for them to like produce this for a bunch of guests. But if they used, I think, like sweetened almond milk with just some like blue raspberry or and then like some other uh, flavoring, 
they could they could make it a lot better. But I mean, I know a lot of people like it, so I mean, maybe try it and see if it's up to your I, taste. I, but I think they're going to end up changing the recipe of it eventually. No. Like I think they're going to have to up the flavor or something. So uh, am I am I to gather like the blue milk is kind of like the butter beer. Well, it's, it's supposed to be their signature drink, yeah, like that. But it's eight dollars, and it's not. I feel like when I get good. a butter beer, yeah. I get a lot more butter beer for less money. Uh, that and I love butter. The beer. difference is, ever almost universally, everyone agrees that butter beer is good. They have a different version they like. You know, yeah. Most people like frozen. I'm a cold person. I know a lot of people who prefer hot, but. It's hard to like meet someone who says I don't care for butter beer at all. Almost everyone loves it. Disney is still swinging and cannot come up with something. The blue milk and green milk does not match up. Uh, whether or the frozen apple juice that we get in Gaston's and then at Cars Land at, in the cozy cone, like it's just frozen apple juice. It's yeah. nothing special. Disney still, while they they have many delicious non-alcoholic specialty drinks in the land that you can get at Docking Bay 7 and Ronto Roasters that are so much better than what you get with the blue and green milk. They they just don't know how to to hit the mark on a signature drink like that. With that said, I would like to see another food area maybe added. Like, I would love it if the sit-down restaurant were to become a reality or something like that. I think that that would really add more to it you know you'd be able to spend even more time in there but i th- I, I bet when we ours opens and we have the hotel that'll be a thing but yeah well we'll find out um as much as i would like to continue this conversation i just got a significant weather advisory oh no wonderful um so i think we should uh we should probably wrap up um cut it a little short Ronto, but, wrap it up. Uh, am I right? I'm sure, what's that? I said Ronto, wrap it up. Am I right? Oh gosh! All right, <laughs> All right folks, that is going to do. Uh, oh, also, like you can get a lot more information on everything they were talking about. The videos that have been posted. Uh, Rhino's making a lightsaber video now over seven hundred thousand yeah, views. I saw watch that. Me, watch me drop the pieces over and over again. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, you can head out. Um, a lot of them on youtube.com slash disunplugged and a lot of them on youtube.com slash wwwdw info. You know, I'm saying if, I've been saying it for 21 years. You'd think I'd be able to enunciate it by now. So that is going to do it for this episode of our show. And that is going to do it for me as well. It's been a pleasure being here with you this past year. Of course, you can always watch me on Tuesdays and on Mondays on the DBC show and Fridays on the dining show and there might be some other shows coming too maybe that's why i'm moving out of this role but i'll be on occasionally but thanks everybody um and uh look forward to seeing you soon take care